I'm live. This is gonna be a lot of me eating chips because this dip has weed in it. And so I'm gonna be getting higher and higher as we go. Well, happy 420. I assume a lot of people here for 420 stuff. Patrons, this is only for patrons. So ask your questions there in the chat in YouTube. And it's like a two minute delay and I'll read them, but we're gonna do basically the April, what is it, April 20th to like early May, mid-May, reading energy that we can expect. And what that's based on is shit I've been going through, but also what I kind of feel like a lot of other people going through, just in talking to other people. I'm eating chips in case that's not clear. So you deal with that. Um, how's everyone doing? I know shit has been pretty crazy the past two weeks, not even the pandemic stuff so much. Um, what's up, Alex? Um, but just lots of like old patterns. What I'd say is oscillations. I know this is astrologically and I'll, I'll get into a whole astrology thing this because I got a little tweet exchange a couple of days ago um, about astrology. But I do know this, this Saturn-Pluto conjunction is really wreaking havoc on traditional systems. And that in particular is fucking a lot of people up who are clinging to traditional systems, whether that be old like financial systems, uh, relationships, professions, uh, friendships, any of that stuff. It can be a little like wonky right now. And so you may have felt like you've been making a lot of progress. And then sometimes like you're, you get these tests to like glimpses of how you used to act or the situations you used to be in. So that is... Uh, Certainly something that I've seen a lot of my friends going through. I've been going through a lot of that. But as you continue to just kind of accept that you're turning a corner or you're like constantly in a process of turning a positive corner, um, shit gets a lot easier to deal with. Uh, so we pulled today, what's up Chelsea? What's up Jess? What's up Jesse? What's up also Alex again? Um, and ask questions as shit come up, shit come up, shit comes up. But the card we God, Jesus. And I'm probably going to lose my ability to speak as time goes on. The cards we picked today uh, for the Oracle reading was the Warrior, which I've shuffled into the deck and lost. So we'll find that. But the way I read the reading today was the Warrior, Compassion, and Manifest. And that really has a lot to do with embodying the spirit of the Warrior, which is not fighting shit. It's not like I got to go to war with you. But just kind of having the perseverance and tenacity to know that you're going to deal with whatever situations you're faced with. And embodying that necessarily implies you're going to have some aspect of compassion. Because you can't really be an effective warrior if you don't understand the compassionate perspective. Otherwise, you're just kind of like an automaton fighting shit. And that doesn't accomplish anything. Probably going to be the last cards that I find in here. So that's what's going on there. Um, but importantly, here we go. Manifest, compassion, the warrior, all together still. So we'll look at these. All right. Happy 420, Avalon. Um, the warrior card. Ram's horn with the sword. So we have Aries fire energy and also this sword, so of clarity, right? This is a position, this is not everyone's energy to jump into right now just to be clear but if you feel called like if you feel like you've been able to push through a lot of stuff especially over the past i don't know six months or so certainly from the beginning of the new year and you feel like not only are you still standing but you have a lot more energy you're probably tapping into this energy right here and this is this comes from also being fed by what you're doing in your life if you're actually doing the shit you feel that is enriching you and feeding you every aspect of your life, you're going to feel strong most of the time. You're going to feel like you can take on bigger and bigger challenges, which is just a conception. It's not like there's actually any bigger challenge in reality, but in duality, that's true. There is. Um, so this is definitely like big time energy for people who are feeling like step into it. Don't, don't be a bitch. <laughs> step into it and own it. Um, and then, like I said, this compassion is a real doozy of a card because traditionally, if we're thinking of a warrior, we could be, look, there's a sword on it. We could be fighting, we could be pushing against things. So compassion can be like, what? How does that fit into that? But again, to be the most effective and strongest person, you actually, like, here's the whole thing. What was I saying? Uh, right. To be truly invulnerable, you have to be vulnerable. There's a direct correlation between your level of being vulnerable and how strong you actually are. Because if you're not being vulnerable, 
um, the, the, the likelihood of getting knocked off those waves I talk about goes up because you haven't been challenged by anything. There's not been like a little divot where you didn't know what was going on. So you actually have to know what's going on so you can deal with it in the best possible way. Oh, a lot of questions coming in right now. Um, oh, I did do a, uh, I'll talk about the lazy reading in a second. So compassion is necessarily embedded in this. Manifest is like, this is if like, if you want your world to reflect back how you're feeling on the inside, you're going to have to definitely A, be a warrior because your, your perspective on reality is constantly going to be challenged. It's just how it is, especially if you're doing new shit. Second of all, if you really want to manifest effectively, if we want to use that word, is like you want to be doing it in a loving way. And that's what you can think of compassion. like It's just doing things in a loving way, looking at it from a loving perspective. That's all. It's nothing more than that. Okay, questions. Did I ever do a reading with Lacey? Oh, if so, how did that go? It fucking went amazing. I would say it's one of the best readings I've ever got. I told her that. Oh, that reminds me. I got to sign you up for a reading. Um, but basically, basically, um, she's incredible. I told her she needs to charge more. So I, I recommend if it was the same price as I got, got go sign up with her now. Um, I like that I can actually see myself getting higher. This is nice. Um, Definitely sign up with her. She pulled out some stuff that other readers have pulled out, but some unique perspectives, some new things. Really, really good. Highly intuitive. Um, she has like herbs and other suggestions she made throughout it. I actually have my notes that I haven't pulled out, but yeah, I highly recommend it. LaceyFree.com is her website. Go sign up. Um, what else? Numbers and shit. Yeah. Unconscious traditional from Carrie. Unconscious traditional relationship expectations transitioning into awakened partnership has been emotional and super confrontational. Also, we are both Aries, so fire, compassionate, warrior resonance. Yeah, big time. So that I have noticed there's there's enough people, whether it's intimate relationships, friendships, family relationships, um, parent-child relationships, even I imagine professional and creative ones, right? Of course. Um, there is this pivot from unconscious traditional quote-unquote relationship to awakened partnership which is you know necessarily implies some of that Aries energy of like clashing not clashing but in a bad way but like that's how you can get some of the friction off and the way that would feel differently is like if that's the only energy that's involved in a relationship whatever it is that's probably not going to last forever but if it's part of it that indicates a healthy thing so the awareness of how you feel in these new partnerships or relationships is super, you know, that's how good they are. It's your level of awareness that dictates what goes on. Okay, how do you envision the new world? Have you come across any utopic models or had any visions? I mean, I've been talking about this for a while. Um, I definitely think community-based. I think a lot of the way children are going to be raised is more communal um, in a good way. I don't think it's going to be a forced communal type of living situation, but I think people are going to find the benefits from that. That alone should have like kind of a connective glue for a lot of people. I think lots of communities and individuals are recognizing the relationship between what they are putting into their bodies and minds. Like they have more ways of deciding what they want to do now. Not everyone, I don't want to make it seem like it's the easiest thing for people to just like snap their finger and have their whole life flipped because they can buy something that's not what it's about but in terms of like what feeds them you know people i think are really going to be shaken up by this whole virus thing so to me and when i say virus it really feels like a very gentle slap on the wrist from the earth she's like hey you fucking idiots like oil today also like i just saw it was negative 40 dollars which someone explained it because it also feels like hey i'll buy all the oil will they give me money to take it but it has something to do with um the storage so like oil has a nat I don't know I'm talking about oil now, but oil has a natural demand. And as it comes in, it needs to be stored. But if people aren't buying it because they're not driving in a lot of places, um, they have to fucking basically get it out of there. And so they pay the distributors to take it out. You can't actually buy oil at negative 20s, as I understand it. Um, but anyway, resources, I think people are going to be more mindful of just what they're doing. This doesn't mean everyone's going to move to the country. I live in the country, so I have that kind of mindset. But um, I think people are just going to be a little more conscientious about where they want to be spending their time, who they want to be spending it with, the stuff they want to be creating, the stuff they want to be involved in, and that's a good thing on the whole. What that specifically looks like, I don't know. Cool people hanging out, probably, doing cool shit. 
Um, Mercury in Aries feels very warrior right now. Yeah, communication in Aries. I didn't know Mercury was in Aries. Awesome. Um, I should probably look at some astrology stuff if I'm about to talk shit about it. Let's do that. Um, let's look at it. Is Mercury in Aries? Yeah, Mercury, right? The planet of communication, the great revealer uh, in the sky right now. Totally in Aries. Oh, so is the moon. Interesting. All right, so we got emotions and communication in the in the in Aries. Oh, in my sixth and fifth house. Jesus Christ. Ugh. Every time I talk shit about astrology, I get smacked on on in the head a little bit. But still, we'll talk about that in a second. Mm. That warrior spirit lines up with that a lot. Interesting. Okay. Um, relation shifts. I like that. Alyssa, that's really nice. Uh, I feel you, Carrie, I've been experiencing, this is from Marina, a lot of emotional oscillation. I've been challenged with old energies and expectations with my partner. And it's been difficult, but compassion helps. Yeah, and then recognize where these lines are. You being the best version of yourself means that you are free to do what you really feel like you have to do. Don't make the mistake of staying in something that feels safe and secure because it's what you've been in. That's super fucking important. Otherwise, you're not growing. You're not growing with the person. You're not growing with anyone. This is not, again, not. this is for every relationship in your life. More importantly, your relationship with yourself, right? Like if you're challenged, like when you, if you're irked by something and it's a situation that has nothing to do with another person, like take that same level of awareness to yourself because that's what's creating these situations externally. There's an amazing correlation. It's everything. That the better you feel on the inside, the more your situations will reflect that back. That doesn't mean everything moves all the time in the smoothest way, but it means that even when it's not smooth, you begin to appreciate it. That's kind of the whole Millarepa, um, you know, when the bad shit happens, it's even especially good because you can really see you have the power of everything because you know how to like navigate that. Um, vulnerability can feel hard. Yeah, that is the truth. Would you ever be open to starting a commune? <laughs> If so, where would you want? How can me and my three wives and eight kids join you? Yeah, of course. This is all just a long con for... Um, do people know the difference? I think bigamy is like multiple wives. Polygamy is multiple multiple partners, not wives. I don't know which one it is. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Commune is like... I like the idea of a commune, but it's like separated enough that like people aren't on top of each other. But if they want to help out like locally and communally that's available and I imagine that like people would have different like interests and things that they did that feels good but like also just in terms of right now me wanting to set anything or organize that no I don't want to say never because I've realized when I say never shit happens too fast when I say that the opposite direction but no not right now I think you know people need to figure out the directions and the projects and the things and the people they want to be around not that they haven't figured this out already, but over the next couple of years, two, three years, I feel like 2024, we're gonna look back in this and be like, oh shit, obviously, that was the shift. That's when we started doing what we're doing now. Um, but yeah, communes, you know, like hangout places, I think events, I think like micro versions. I've never been to Burning Man, but I know plenty of people I have for a very long time. And I think like micro versions of that, not just as like a festival standpoint, but as like an ethos, but not like in a location that's not people's homes. Um, those types of communities, I think at the core could be useful, but like communes and I don't want to say cults, but like something breeds in those types of situations if they're too regulated. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think it's a natural way of living kind of tribally, but interfacing it with like kind of modern perspectives is a, is a thing to be aware of. Okay. I don't know. That's a stupid answer to a good question. Um, Love that there's 33 people in here right now. Nice. Uh, yeah, just noticed that. Cool. Yeah, 35 now, though. We're super popular. All right. I give you oldest wife her cooking pad. Yeah, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, we just trade it. We just trade it. We just do it like Borat. Um, all right. So let's get to... Okay, let's, let's talk about astrology a little bit. I had some time to think about this over the course of two days. So I was making a point on Twitter... Is you ready for these readings just to me talking about shit I read about on Twitter? It's the worst. Um, but I was saying, trying to make the point that we get too caught up in any modality, astrology included, especially astrology, because it's kind of like the new religion in a lot of people's ways. Now, it's a little less regulated, and there's so many different perspectives that it, I, I 
don't want to call it a religion right away, but people really subscribe and ascribe to its power. I do too, just to be clear. I use it in readings. I use it in my own life. Um, but you don't want to get too caught up in it, the movement of the planets as they pertain to your natal chart too much, just from a logical standpoint, because if you look at different ways of looking at your chart, it, you can be so many different things. You can be an Aries here. You can be a Cancer there. There's so many different ways that this stuff just actually moves around depending on the positioning of how people look about it. So un look at it. So unless you really understand the movement of the spheres in a very practical way and you know how to calibrate for all that, just recognize there's some degree of error. That's number one. Number two, which is actually more important for me, is nothing is as important as your recognition and awareness that what you feel and believe and fully accept is then outpictured into your life. So if you fully accept astrology as the end on be all, which is somewhat of a dangerous thing to do, you should only accept something that you recognize yourself as the creator and sustainer of all this. Um, you might get tossed around at certain points. You may have like a perfect grasp on external circumstances and predictions and relationships and energies, but then there may be something when you're actually confronted with what is the operative mechanism here, it may not add up. So I was pointing this out, you know, there was enough of a reactive energy because I follow enough astrologers on Twitter. Sometimes I get a little catty about it. It's just a Twitter thing. That's what Twitter breeds that. I'm usually pretty good at, at not doing it, but it happens. Um, but it happened, and I just want to remind people that like astrology is incredibly useful, incredibly valid. I use it frequently and often, but if it feels like it's binding me to something or constrictive or fucking my shit up because of what a planet's doing, or on the other side, if like, oh, something good is definitely gonna happen because of this exclusively, you're giving it too much power. So just watch that relationship. It's fun to give things in duality, like astrology and energy and holistic, all this holistic, esoteric rather, occult stuff, all this stuff. It's fun and it works and it's real because we give it the power, but if you forget that and just totally give up your shit, and I get like the nerdy fun of doing that, especially with astrology. It's super fucking interesting. There's all this mythology in it. Just any direction you want to go, you know, from horary to archetypal, there's just so much. But anyway, it's cool. So we just don't get too caught up in, in it shit. Okay, now we're going to pull cards. Keep the stuff coming. Did I miss anything? LOL. I'll give you all the Yeah. Here we go. So we'll pull cards for this coming period what did i say let's save to like may 15th that's when the governor of new york andrew cuomo said that stuff will be pull that card for him fucking nine of swords motherfucker uh <laughs> just kidding we love andrew cuomo too we'll pull some cards for what we can expect coming up feels like a lot of integration also something that's been coming up a lot is um this still feels like a planning and get your shit together phase for a lot of people, myself included, don't judge yourself for output now. There will be, a, listen, there will be a time you gotta show your work, you know, but don't get too caught up. People are still just adjusting to this new reality. I was at the health food store getting groceries today and someone, the, the girl at the checkout who, who I like a lot, she, she basically was like saying that everything kind of feels like a four-way stop that everyone is at in every social interaction because there's all these new social interactions like no one knows where to go it's like everyone got there at once and like we're dealing with just like from a mundane level all these different ways of acting in public we have to wear masks now in uh in new york and uh face id doesn't work with masks that's fucking annoying got used to that and i can't use it's like now this pandemic is real all right so let's pull these cards oh that makes sense <laughs> Okay. Nine of Wands. This is the card of having the shit beaten out of you, but still, you're still standing. This is very much in line with the warrior spirit. This is kind of what I was talking about. Like, if you feel like you've taken on a lot, but you're still standing, and you can feel better than this guy who's gotten the shit kicked out of him, um, you're in good shape. Also, notice the green shoes. That implies, like, that's the ability to grow. That's your contact with the world. You grow from these experiences. It's not like the shit is just happening to you so you like or to get fucked up. That's dumb. It doesn't make sense. So just recognize you're still standing. You're still signing up for a Patreon reading with the crazy person with the podcast. You're doing pretty good. So embrace this as your platform, as your foundation. This is the dominant theme we're working for. Through, I should say. Then we have the Ten of Swords reversed, right? This was my 2020 card, just to be clear. Uh, upright this was just like straight up stab city 
you're dead. You're dead. Everything you know is dead. Everything you were is dead. Not in a bad way, not in a morbid way, but in a dawning of a new day way. That's why we see, I'm trying to get the light right. That's why we see this yellow of the new day coming and the darkness is lifting. And this is just kind of the energy that we're going through. This is the Saturn, Pluto stuff. Um, it's pretty cool. Wait a second. What is this? Who just texted me? I don't know. Anyway, just new type of version something, new type of version something, that's, that's a good sentence. New version of yourself, something to embrace, right? And reversed in this position, which means any resistance, any kind of fear, any, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I am this person. It's not the end of the world. It's not like you're going to fuck your shit up, but it's just going to be uncomfortable until you just accept this. This is also like you need to let yourself get stabbed here. There is a le level of vulnerability implied here. So that's the 10. So we get a 9, 10, and then we get a 1 with the Page of Wands upright. And this card's been coming up a lot in readings. Just had one and it came up. Um, super cool card. Wands representing fire. Rep this is good with the airy stuff. Ambition, passion, um, you know, movement. And we can see there it is. And we can see the pyramids in the back there, the three pyramids, a traditional sign of ascension. This is just how shit works, right? When we're looking at spirituality, they come in threes, the triangle, look into it. It's good stuff. But passion moving us towards what is going to kind of bring us into the best versions of ourselves. Now, one really interesting, interesting thing to notice about this card is the gray hat with the red feather in it. I'm trying to get the color right here. Ugh. Yeah. Gray hat. So that isn't like you're not totally clear. On, this is a new path. You're not totally clear on what's going on logically and mentally. That's super important to keep in mind because we think, oh, new path. I know exactly what I'm doing. What a fun, exciting time. And it is. But logically, you might not have that clarity about what this actually means. But you know, if your passion is the thing guiding you, you have this infinity or boro symbol with the lizard on the yellow cloak, yellow implying creativity and intellect. Same thing on the shoes there. That's your platform in which you engage with the world. Uh, it's good stuff. I said I was going to be eating chips, and I didn't eat chips. Let me read your questions and eat some chips. Uh, but basically, yeah, this is this is the path. So the next 20 days or so, I think you can expect platform. You may still get some stuff thrown your way. Maybe not. Maybe you're done with that. Totally cool. Either way, you're going to grow. Just let the versions of you that hold you back go. Super important. And not hard to do, funnily enough. And then just get ready. New path. But this is does imply passion. If you are putting yourself on a path or staying on a path where you're not passionate about your relationships, your work, your career, just the stuff you're doing, that ain't going to work. That is not going to work. Okay, stuff came in here. Uh, first world problems, yeah. I like the four-way stop analogy. It's so good, right? Yeah. What are you sipping on there? Kombucha. Healthy kombucha. I like this stuff. Ginger lemon. They should pay me, right? Go, someone make them pay me. Mm. Yeah, it is kombucha, Alex, right? What are some of your preferred weed strains? That's a great question. What a good question. Uh, lamb's bread is one of my favorites um, that I've ever had. If I can get authentic lamb's bread, that is what I'll do. It's sativa heavy. Any sativa, I mean, I don't, it's kind of a dumb thing to say at this point because nothing is a real sativa, but um, it's, uh, oh, look who it is. Duncan. It's Duncan's birthday, by the way. Say happy birthday to him. He'll like it. His new show is on Netflix. Go check that out too. Um, uh, anything, I like the mental highs. I'm not a, I like Indica's when the time is right, but I do like the effervescence, that's a fun word for that, of sativas. Um, so lamb's bread, um, you know, I like the fruity stuff. I do like Pineapple Express when you can get the real stuff. Anything real, like I got some stuff. Oh, some Maui Wowie I got in, in Maui. That was some of the best I ever had. Shit I grew is the best. That's the truth. Just anything you can grow, grow your own weed. That's my only weed advice. If you can, also it's fun. Like just growing stuff in general is fun. It's super easy to grow. Make sure, you know, you don't have to worry about getting in trouble. No, you're not getting in trouble. But if you do get in trouble, don't blame me. It's not my fault. You're an idiot. Uh, okay. Uh, kombucha. Shit. Oh, shit. I'll message him. Yeah. I, w I was just watching Midnight Gospel before this. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. I bet it's really good. 
been doing stuff all day. Yeah, yeah. Duncan is a very sweet guy. We've had a we met through the Ram Dass uh, Love Surfer member community. Fun times. Um, yeah, so stuff's good. Do we need any more clay? Let's pull, so we'll pull three oracle cards and then we'll call it a wrap. If you have questions, this is the time to do it because we're going to put in a solid half hour. And then we'll probably have another reading next week. I'm reshuffling the Patreon. So there's going to be, I think, what is it? A $3, 333 Seven 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 thirteen thirteen and twenty two twenty two. So like, stay tuned for that. You may be able to move down if you only want some stuff, or move up if you want more stuff. So that's going to be going on. But we'll be doing more readings and more episodes, and some more guest ones will be coming out on Patreon. Just because, why not? Okay, let's shuffle these up real good. Let's shuffle these up real good. Yeah, Duncan's a really nice. All right, three for this next 20 days. This is fun for me. Power, dare to dream. This one comes up. Oh, and the weed card. This is why 420 is the best. You're fucking kidding me. Can't make this shit up. All right, power, right? We see the bear on it. This is like, if you're, you, you we have old, everything that is true that you have ever claimed for any deity, any God, any person, that's yours too. That's your power too. If you understand that, you literally have access to anything ever. Just be sure you actually want it lovingly. Use it wisely. But that's, we're stepping into that. I'm just moving through these as quick as possible to get to the weed card. Dare to dream though, right? Ruby and the Eagle Talon. Um, this is it. Don't limit yourself based on what you think is allowed for you based on other people's perspectives. Your perspective is the only thing that matters. If you can stabilize your consciousness, you can do anything you want. That's really true. Pressure test yourself and your reality until you actually understand that. Don't just take it for granted or take my word for it. That's a dumb, stupid thing to do. Don't take anyone's word for it besides yourself. Test the shit. Test it with things that are believable for you. Then start testing the unbelievable and see what happens. 420, right? Versatility. There's the weed card. We see the rat on it. It's year of the rat. Um, weed, right, divine feminine energy in my experience. Uh, also associated with Shiva in the Vedic traditions. Um, intuition, right? You can just sit below, sift below, drop below your logical mind. And if you can maintain awareness there, you get access to a whole host of other inter so the way I look at what we're doing constantly is building a bridge between our conscious mind and our subconscious, right? So that's our logical mind and our intuitive heart. Weed will drop you down into your intuitive heart if you can maintain the connection between your conscious mind, your third eye basically, and your heart chakra. You can start building the bridge from both ends. You can build it from just one end. You could, pro I'd recommend probably the heart side. You could build it just from that end, but it's going to take you longer to finish there. And if you're coming from two different sides, you're going to get a better project. I don't know how to build bridges. Is that how you build bridges? Just imagine, I don't know, it sounds maybe like it's crazy, but that's what you do. You want to build it from both sides. So be able to feel your way into a situation, but also logically accept that this is how things work and give the power to your heart. That's important. Um, hi, Noah, what is the recent and sudden separation with my girlfriend supposed to mean bring us? <laughs> I mean, that is for you to decide. Also... I find when people ask that question, you know, you know the answer to it. If you are grasping or not able to logically understand what the meaning is, you can ask the other person. And if you sense that they're being honest and giving you a real answer, you can accept that. If you sense there's something else, then maybe that's going to help give you some insight. Um, but you always have the answer for that. Doesn't necessarily mean an ending unless that's what's meant to happen. And you determine that doesn't mean you selfishly cling to something because you don't want it to end. It means, what's the lesson here? So I can't answer that question specifically. Um, it is okay to ask questions, yes. He's trying to end around 30 minutes. Oh, I can ask. We can, we can smoke weed outside, I guess. I got a blunt. Um, I love the infinity tales on those rats. I know. Super cool, right? Sorry, never mind. No worries. Who makes that deck? That's Threads of Fate. Let's go outside and smoke some weed. Eh? We're 420. I'm feeling like it's a fun time. Full card. Fun time. You want to say hi? <laughs> Let's open this door. It's a beautiful day. 
Look, it's outside. Light them if you got them. You made it, Natalie. Thank you. I am eating the dip, that French onion dip. I think it was soup that you made. It's amazing. Thank you for that. That place behind me there is really fucking cool. It's being built. Cool shit. Um, yeah. Any more questions, though? Happy 420 to everyone. It's good times. The cards, though, really are pretty clear about what to do. It's like time to step into your own power, but don't judge yourself if it's not happening right away. That's very clear. It's a time of integration is the word that keeps coming up. Balance, perseverance, intuition. Always good things, but especially important right now. Yeah, it's so nice out here. The trees didn't even start blooming yet. This weed is just okay. I need better weed. I'm trying to figure I'm going to grow, but I don't know how quickly I can get it up and running in my new spot, but Cool. Who that? What else we got going on, guys? You rearrange your living room today when I smoke and work. Yeah, smoking is the best. I just love smoking. People like the the edibles are good. I like them, but I just like the act of smoking really good weed. Growing really good weed is the best. Grow weed and send it to me. That's my dream. It's the only cult I want to be a part of. Is one where I'm the cult leader. I have to send more. When did Shauna Cass? So Shauna Cass never came. They were gonna come the next day. This has happened the past three times. Um, they say they're gonna come, and then they usually do drugs and don't come. But I'll probably see them soon. I imagine we'll probably see each other in the next ten days. Just feels like that type of situation, tender type of situation from a ween heads. Yeah, it's really nice here. It's beautiful. It's the Hudson Valley. Can't beat it. This is where I got stuck for the pandemic. Not much has changed. There's the lake. You see there's frogs there. They're always yakking. Yeah, just laid it. Weed's the best. This weed's just okay, though. I have other stuff. This is blunt weed. I'm not going to put good shit in here. My friend's from the Bronx, so they'll just put anything in there. Put all the good stuff in a blunt. All right, guys, any other questions? We'll give it another minute, and then we'll end this. We'll do another reading for patrons in a week, not even. And I'll release a bonus episode next week, probably the one with Tess, my sister, with the mezcal for people who have been interested in that. And, uh, yeah, cool. Did you wellspring? No, I didn't hear that. Yeah, build a bridge between your conscious and unconscious. It's great. It's the best. Yeah, grow in Michigan. I've heard. My friend was growing in Michigan the last I heard. Um, <clears throat> it's good. Just grow weed. It's the best. It's fun. It's like people haven't grown anything. It's a great thing to start. It grows really easily. Kind of hard to fuck it up. To fucking smoke it. It's great. You love it. It's different. It shows you it's you. The weed you grow is you. So however that smokes is you. So if you really got your shit together and you grow weed, it's fucking great. Love my Jessa Patreon. Yeah, that was a good one. You did actually get a tick on my dick. That was crazy. I don't recommend it for anyone, but I'm fine. It healed. No lime. Lime is a construct. It's, apologies to anyone who thinks they have lime or has lime. I know it's diagnosable, but you know my thoughts on those things. This is fun. We should just use this as the clip to get patrons. We'll just smoke weed together. You know what? We should do that, patrons. Maybe we just pick a day every month, smoke weed together. That's kind of fun, right? That's a patron per perk if I've ever heard one. And then we can actually do that live when we do events again. Events are definitely still coming, by the way. We'll do those. Membership is still good. If you're a patron, you get them for free. Yo, I don't know how to dab Marina. Anyone, teach me how to dab. I have a whole fucking ray. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. It's confusing to me. I have shit too. Natalie, I can't figure out how to smoke it. 
Where did he go, though? Where did who go? The tick? I took him off. He's dead. Get a wild ride. He's in and out of a vagina. It's crazy. Or Virginia, we say. All right, guys. I'm ending it. Virtual smoke sesh. We'll figure that out. Love ya. Happy 420.